seconds and counting. Hey, what's good, yo? Welcome back to another video. It's Anisha. I'm joining with E. And today we're going to be talking about some trade rumors. So Debo Samuel has requested a trade from the 49ers. And a big team that has been interested in acquiring Debo Samuel is actually the Houston Texans. And a reporter from the San Francisco Athletic, Tim Kawakami, said that um, most of the focus he's heard is on Houston. And um, he says that I don't know if the 49ers and Houston have had talks or if that would be Debo's first choice, but there's chatter that Houston's interested. And so it's and he also adds that the 13th pick is, seems to be the one in conversation. So uh, to me, I would not mind this move at all. We would we could use this star talent. Um, but um, E, what are your like first initial thoughts on acquiring Debo? I mean, at first, to be honest, I was interested, like, having someone as good as Debo Samuel on the Texans. But, like, after looking at it and probably knowing that he's going to ask for a big bag this season, he's going he's gonna to want to get paid. I'm just not sure if we're in a position to pay a player, like, as much as he wants. Because we're still, like, realistically two, three years away from being a contender. And we don't even know if... Like, as much as I love Mills and as much as I like the back Mills, we don't even know if he's going to be a QB for the future. So we don't know exactly what you're working with yet. And I'm sure more receivers are going to end up passing out in two or three years. So in two or three years, you, you go in for a move like this. But I feel like right now, we're in no position to go for a move like this. Yeah, I feel you. But Mills is on a rookie contract. And say if Mills doesn't pan out, then you're probably in a good position um, to acquire one of the top QBs in the next next year's draft. Because if Mills doesn't pan out, then we probably have a really bad record. And so we're probably at one of the top of the next year's draft. So we probably still have a rookie quarterback. So we'll, we'll still have a QB on a rookie deal. So And in terms of do we have the financial um, capital to acquire Debo, um, in 2023, we have one of the most um, cap space in the league. And so... It does seem weird if, like, since we just like extended Cooks, um, and then we were to like acquire Debo and extend him. It does seem weird to pay um two wide receivers. I know DeAndre Hopkins would be mad about that, <laughs> um, but um, I think it would be pretty interesting because we do have the draft capital. We got so many assets from the Deshaun Watson trade, so we're not going to be crippled if we do make a trade for Debo, in my opinion. And like I said, we have the money to do it. You still have the QB on a rookie deal. And you're giving Mills proven talent. Like you have Cooks, who's a proven wide receiver talent. You have Debo, who's also a really good wide receiver, not only at running back, um, but he's also a great wide receiver, arguably the third best wide receiver this past league. No, sorry, in the past season. So um, I'll, I'll, I can list some stats later, but Debo, I think... You, you also need these proven, talented guys. You can have so many rookies, but you can't just struggle, in my opinion, with just rookies. Um, you have to have some proven talent, and I feel like we do have the means. But honestly, I'm open to whichever side I could be persuaded. But uh, what, do you have a counter argument to that? <laughs> I mean, not really. Like, you're persuading me into the trade for the <laughs> side. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I just the, the thought of giving men's even more talent to work mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. it's kind of getting me interested in like giving up something for Debo it's just the fact that he's probably going to ask for a lot of money yeah I don't know how comfortable I am with that because as I said like every year there's going to be a receiver or a star player that's going to mm -hmm. ask out and you don't want to jump the gun too early or this might be the perfect opportunity like you can't tell what's going to happen in the future especially with the NFL yeah so I think Maybe, like, I'm now on the fence on this. I don't yeah. know if we go for it or not. <laughs> yeah. I think the biggest question mark is the system, obviously. Like, 49ers, Kyle Shanahan, one of the biggest geniuses in, in the NFL. He obviously knows how to use talent to its ultimate potential. So, at the Texans, there's obviously question marks on whether or not they would they could use a talent like Debo Samuel. But talent is talent, and it will find its way somewhere in my opinion like just some of the stats like Debo Samuel had more yards after the catch than receiving yards um sorry that was that was like a stat in 2020 but um in 2021 he had 36 
um, combined missed tackles. That was the first among wide receivers. Um, he had one of the most receiving yards past the sticks, so he's a big chain mover. Um, he had 239 receiving yards past the that first down marker. Um, and just like he was used as running back after the running backs um, for the 49ers got injured. So he does have that versatility if needed, but he's primarily a wide receiver. So if you're worried about usage, he was only used that way because there was a need for him to be used that way in a sense. So he was used like in the backfield um, 116 times, um, 239 times in the slot, 591 times at wide receiver, um, and 16 times at kick return. So this guy can play, do it all. Uh, I know Nick Casero really values versatility, so just getting a proven talent in Debo, in my opinion, would be really great to get, and I don't know, it's just, the more I talk about it, the more I want it to happen. I know some of y'all are enamored with some of the rookie um, wide receivers like Jamison or Traylon Burks, who has had some NFL comparisons to Debo, so it really depends on the evaluation of the Texans, like, do they think um, like at pick thirteen, there's so many ways he can go, right? Um, like wide receiver or um linebacker or even edge or cornerback. Like there's so many options. The Texans are like, we can't really decide. Why not just get a proven talent? And for me, the way I look at it, like not all the draft picks that we have are gonna be surefire talents. We're gonna have some misses here and there. So why not acquire a proven talent? Is all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, before it started, we used to do the mocks. Mm -hmm. I used to compare Garrett Wilson to some some sort of a Debo Samuel type role. Yeah. So now that we could just have the real thing, not the comparison, <laughs> yeah. it's just making me even more interested in this. Yeah. And I want to see like how offensive coordinators, uh, Pep Hamilton, would work with Debo Samuel. I feel like he can cook up something with that too. So I, I entered like into this recording going against Divo Samuel, but now I'm like becoming pro Divo Samuel. I'm about to buy the jersey today. <laughs> I need him on the team. You know? <laughs> Dude, I would love Divo so much, and like, and at three, that would obviously if there's also things that also the 49ers have a need to acquire draft capital. I believe. Um, let me see. I, I don't think they have like a pick until the second round or they're especially lacking in draft yeah, capital yeah. because they traded up for Trey Lance. I think they have the 61st pick because they traded for Trey Lance last year. I think they're going to be looking into that. <laughs> they definitely have a need. And then also one thing to know is just speculation, obviously, but the 49ers, they did lose like their starting like tackle and guard and they didn't sign anyone in free agency. Someone was mentioning on Twitter that maybe since we haven't really picked up the uh, the option on Titus, maybe he might be involved in the deal to lessen the draft compensation given. And maybe that means we are more incentivized to go with O-line at three. And you have some of the better options uh, like Evan Neal, probably one of the better tackle prospects. And then um, Ori Kemekwanu. So there's just a lot of things you can do with this. Um, it might make the draft strategy more clear for the Texans um, if they were to acquire Debo. So they're like, they know what, what they need to fix right now. Um, but again, I see the other side, like we need depth in a lot of positions. Why are we giving up so much draft capital? But it's just like, it's hard to say that every pick is going to pan out. I um, mean, I don't know what the Texans are going to do with so many um, rookie contracts, right? So that's just how I think of it. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, um, a small thing to note is that Nick Casario didn't have a first round pick last year, and he still drafted a lot of great talent. So it's not like he can't find talent in the later rounds. Like if we do end up losing a first round pick, we're probably still going to find depth in the draft somewhere, somewhere or another, because Nick has just proven last year that he pretty much went four, five for five or four for four, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thought of, you know, as much as I love Titus Howard, I talked about it with Drew in the last video. Uh, I feel like if we end up trading him and getting Evan Neal instead, I would still take that. I'll take that as a good W because mm -hmm. he seems to be like a generational tackle, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. I Evan mean, Neal just yeah, I think he guy, had you know? a great combine, right? Did he have a great combine? Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure because okay. I don't like looking as much okay. into combine numbers. Well, let me see. It can be misleading. 
But yeah, I think he had one of the better... Yeah, I believe he had one of the better comp, and he also matches well on tape. Like if the combine matches the tape, I think that's when his dr- his stock e- even rises, like rises even more, right? Because um, you know he's a certified talent, and then when he moves as well as he does at his size, that even makes you even more enamored to draft someone like Evan Neal. So yeah, like I said, it's just it's hard to say. There's so many ways he can go with this. I, I'm just curious to hear what our subscribers think. Um, but that's pretty much it for the video. Let us know your thoughts on a potential trade for Debo Samuel. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Thank you all for watching. Peace.